uh, thank you very much for um, uh, uh, AI uh, Calgary AI Meetup for inviting us here. I'm actually a member of something similar to this in Ottawa called uh, Cybersecurity Meetup, and we don't get crowds like this, so uh, this is absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, our AI today, uh, but I'd just like to point out we also have our partners, our local partners here from Cadian. Can the Cadian guys stand up, please, very quickly? There they are. So, so if you can get questions to me later on, grab those three and they'll then make sure we get the questions, okay? Anyway, folks, my name is Dave Masson. Uh, tonight, I'm the Director of Enterprise Cybersecurity for Dark Trace. I'm also the Country Manager um, here in Canada. And I'm going to talk about embracing AI for cyber defense, okay? So that's our AI take tonight. And this is going to be narrow AI, not that broad AI stuff, which, as you all know, doesn't actually exist. There we go. Quick bit about the company. Uh, we've been around for five years now, founded in 2013. Uh, we originally come out of um, Cambridge University back in the United Kingdom, and we are original amalgam of two groups of people, um, some machine learning and mathematics guys coming out of uh, Cambridge University, and a group of guys, it was guys at the time, we're now pretty much half and half gender-wise, uh, coming out of the British Intelligence Services who'd been working defending uh, Britain's critical national infrastructure uh, from cyber threat. Um, some of the statistics you see up in front of you there, valued at 1.65 billion last year, that's not bad after five years. 800 employees, actually, I think we're, we're about 900 now. Uh, offices all over the world. And in Canada, we've been here for three years. So I set us up literally about three years ago this month. And we now have offices in Vancouver, which handles this uh, part of Canada. Uh, Toronto, naturally, because Ontario, you know, that's, uh, that's the center of the universe, right? Ooh. Hey, come on, well done. That's more like it. I live in eastern Ontario, and I, I'm not a big fan of Toronto. And we have an office in Ottawa, which is uh, uh, where I sometimes live. Uh, you'll see a little bit on there that shows some of the verticals that we sell to. Uh, you see that the one that we sell to most is the financial sector. Uh, to be honest with you, in cybersecurity, everybody sells most to the financial sector because they get hacked more than everybody else because that's where all the cash is, okay? But interesting for us, we're seeing um, uh, technology and media uh, creeping up there. That's the second highest um, on the bar. And that's been getting higher and higher every quarter. And I think that's pretty much because a lot of people have now realized they're going to have to got a really good technological idea. They're going to have to protect it or somebody's going to destroy it or take it from them. And I expect to see um, that graph grow uh, over time. I'm just quickly going to dig my watch out here to make sure I don't go over time. OK, there we are. So um, first, I'll say a little bit about the threat landscape as we see it. I'm sure most of you are very well aware of the threat landscape, but ours is a slightly different take. Um, when we go into um, Fortune 500 companies, 80% uh, of the time, using our artificial intelligence, our software, we find stuff that they had absolutely no idea was on the network, whether it's malware, insider threat, misconfigurations, and some really weird stuff, okay? And they had absolutely no idea about this, nothing, no idea whatsoever. Outside, and by the way, Fortune 500, they've got budget, they've got people, and they have resourced to tackle this problem. Outside the Fortune 500, that goes up to 95% of the time, and that's pretty much all the time. Um, in Canada today, I've never known us to go into a Canadian organization and not find something wrong with them, okay? And this was the issue back in Britain six years ago, and why is that? For us, quite clearly, something isn't working. In our view, the legacy approach to cybersecurity isn't working. It's working up to a point, but not enough. Okay, if you're going to continue to defend your uh, networks based on knowing all the bad stuff and trying to keep it off your network, good luck, or based on past experience, trying to predefine what you think bad's going to be in the future, and that's a, you, know, you can do that, and you can use AI to do it, uh, good luck too. But I'm going to say to you that will never be enough. It's not been enough for a long time, and that is why people are having problems. So we took a fundamentally um, innovative approach to this using artificial intelligence because at the same time, the scale of the cyber threat that we face, uh, and you know what, I'm I always have to do this doom and gloom bit. That's why it's good I've got a Scottish accent, because I really sound miserable when I'm doing it. It's because the scale of the threat we face is now too much in terms of quantity. It is too sophisticated, and that sophistication is just going to get more complex. It's not going to get less complex. And attacks are now moving at machine speed that quite simply human beings cannot keep up with this. And they will never keep up with this. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, there's a big deficit in the number of good qualified cyber analysts in the world. I, it used to be one and a half million. I saw on LinkedIn the other day, it's now three million. I think it's 600,000 were short of in North America. 
and it's either eight or 80,000 in Canada. But I'm going to say to you that even if you could recruit them right here and now, you can't throw more people at this subject, at this problem, okay? It's too much. Human beings are being overwhelmed. Our view is you're going to need to use machines, artificial intelligence, to keep up with this, okay? And that's what we do. Now, I hasten to add, this isn't AI taking over the world. I'm sure you've heard all this stuff before, okay? This is narrow AI, for a tool for a specific purpose, okay? And in our case, that's cybersecurity. This isn't about replacing people. This is actually about supporting that scarce human resource that you've already got. Doing the heavy lift in terms of threat and stopping it, I'll talk about that in a second, and all the other stuff that comes with that, freeing up those human beings to actually concentrate on some quality work rather than basically being, quite frankly, overwhelmed. And to be honest with you, business diversity is overwhelming security teams, never mind the actual scale of the threat that they face. So, our solution is artificial intelligence. Okay, there's a piece of DNA up on the screen. Uh, so watch out, here comes some marketing, but it's good marketing, okay? But it's a metaphor and it'll make it easier for, for you to understand how our artificial intelligence actually works. So. We call it the uh, enterprise immune uh, system. We call it an immune approach to the problem. The human immune system has an innate understanding of self. You know, it's me is me, you is you, and my colleagues is my colleagues, because we're all completely different. Computer networks are all completely different. I'm gonna put it to you that what you learn on one network is not gonna be 100% relevant to another network, because we're all different all the time. The human immune system, innate understanding of self, what that means is it knows of me and not of me, okay? So as soon as something gets through my firewall, my skin, haha, but that's what your skin is, okay? Bacteria, virus gets through. The immune system knows straight away, not Dave, straight away. It doesn't have to be told what to do. It doesn't have to look at a book of previous illnesses I suffered from, chicken pox, Ebola, Ebola? It doesn't have to do that, right? It just knows not me and gets to work straight away and alerts. And if it can't handle it, you end up with loads of symptoms, you go off and get a doctor and get some help. That's how our AI works. It knows, it doesn't think in terms of good or bad or malware or whatever, it just knows of the network, not of the network. Of the iPad and accounts, not of the iPad and accounts. Of the printer and HR, not of the printer and HR. Or when it comes to human beings, of Bob the accountant, not of Bob the accountant. Of Susie the um, HR specialist, not of Susie the HR specialist. That's how it works, okay? And what our AI effectively does is we, rather than using rules and signatures, i.e. knowing all the bad, or trying to guess what bad's gonna be, quite simply what our software does is it takes your raw network traffic, and I mean all of it, off your network, wherever you are, wherever you are in your digital infrastructure, whether you're in the cloud, virtual, SaaS, on-prem, whatever, you take it all onto the software for analysis. I'll, I'll, I can talk about more in the technical ways we do that, maybe in the Q&A. And it just learns the pattern of life of everything on the network, and I mean absolutely everything. We're using every single packet off the wire for deep packet inspection analysis here. And it simply learns how things are, that's what it does. Learns and understands the pattern of life of every user, every device, subnet, DNS server, blah, 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 whatever, and the network of a, as a whole. And because it now understands the pattern of life, maybe somebody guess where I'm actually going here, it will see changes to that pattern of life in real time. And that is how we find threat on networks. We don't bother with trying to know the bad, guess what the bad is, threat intelligence, we don't bother with the big bad world out there because you can't keep up with it, right? What we do is we look at how everything is and then see change and depending on how much of a change it is, we alert, okay? And that's the, you should be thinking in your head straight away, false positives here. We don't have any false positives. Everything we alert on is a genuine change, a genuine anomaly, the pattern of life of whatever it is on the network. The trick is in how much of a change is it? And the greater that change, the more deserving it is of your security team's attention right now in real time. And that, folks, is basically how our AI works. Narrow AI for a tool for a specific job, specific purpose, in this case, cybersecurity. Hold on to that pattern of life thing, okay? Hold on to that in your head, because we're going to come back to it. Everybody at the back, pattern of life, okay? Hold on to that concept.
doesn't matter where, you, where your stuff is, right across, right across your network, cloud, home. Uh, by the way, it's the same for OT as well as IT. Um, we, uh, we're not worried about um, those protocols in OT. Um, we just look upon them as a, a beskip, be, bespoke forms of encryption. And before anybody asks later on, we don't care if the packets are encrypted because we don't, we're not interested in what it is. We're interested in what is it doing. That's going to tell you whether it's going to be malicious or not. So wherever, you, wherever your traffic is, we can get on our software for analysis, do those pattern of life models, and then look for change in real time. So getting back to that pattern of life piece. So what you're seeing there is a photograph of an antibody. I'm not a big fan of that slide, but that's an antibody, okay? So I want to put to you now, we're using machine learning, artificial intelligence, I'll talk about machine learning a bit in a second, to find threat in networks, through understanding the pattern of life. If we now know the pattern of life, we can enforce the pattern of life when it changes. And that is how we stop threat on networks. Because we know what the pattern of life was up to the microsecond of change, and if our software thinks that change is malicious or big enough of a change, we stop the change and enforce the pattern of life of the device or the user or the network or the subnet or whatever. And that is how we stop threat. Is everybody okay with that concept? Is everybody, is, you have to understand how we're doing this? That is how we find threat, and that is how we stop threat, by understanding the pattern of life. The type of machine learning that we're using here is called unsupervised machine learning, not supervised. If we were using supervised machine learning, we'd have to train the machines on what to look for. And all we can train them on what to look for is knowing all the bad stuff or trying to guess what the bad stuff is. And those machines will be super efficient at doing exactly that. But all they will find is what you trained it to find. We don't do that. Unsupervised machine learning is to just sit there and learn the pattern of life of everything on the network. Um, yeah. So these are machines that are making judgments on your behalf when it comes to finding threat. That's, a, that's a d sometimes a difficult concept for some people. But when it comes to actually stopping threat autonomously without any human intervention, there's no humans here, okay, when we're doing this. The humans are coming in after the event. That can be even more difficult for people to grasp with, and we understand that. So particularly when it comes to allowing artificial intelligence to make a decision on your behalf, you know, we let people take time. Uh, we allow the, the AI to say, do you know what, ransomware just landed, and if you let me, this is what I would do to stop it, okay? And then you can decide, yeah, okay, or no, don't. Don't? But anyway. And as you get used to it, then you can just, yeah, I'm happy with that, comfortable. And remember, every time you, 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 you interact with our AI, the AI is learning how you interact with it. It never stops learning. And then eventually, hopefully, you become comfortable with it and allow it free reign and away it goes. And currently, right now, my colleagues at the back can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it takes about four to six weeks before people are comfortable with AI. About that, yeah. Before people are happy to say, do you know what? We just had some malware land on the network and AI, um, Darktrace actually stopped it. Remember, we stop it, we quarantine it, strangle it, slow it down. We don't clean it up, somebody else can come and do that. The great news is it gives those human beings a chance to catch up, okay? That's what we do. Um, no, I haven't got time for that. Let's move on. In the way that um, we find threat right across your entire digital infrastructure, this is how we can stop it. Our, our uh, autonomous response is called antigena. Antigens fight the pathogens in your body. And likewise, we can do it on your network, cloud, SaaS, or on your email. When it comes to email, everything folks, I stress, is based on pattern of life. This isn't stopping email at the border, checking them against signatures or a blacklist, that one chance you've got as it comes in. This is stopping threat through email based on the pattern of life of email usage by individuals and the entire network. It's all done on pattern of life. Right, quick look at my watch. I'm going to give you a couple examples now, and I'm going to call my uh, colleague Lauren to come up and show you a live demo, okay? So you can actually see um, AI uh, as, it, um, as it fires away. The first one I'm going to cover off is this. Compromised equipment on assembly line. So these are IoT devices uh, on an OT network. I've got a huge explanation here, but I'm, I'm going to briefly summarize it. This was um, a food manufacturing company. They made cakes, okay? And they had uh, IoT devices, blenders, baggers and slicers. 
And as some of you, I'm sure, will know, on OT networks, you know, what those things do are pretty boring. It's the same repetitive things again and again and again and again and again. There's not much interest there. And I have to say that these devices themselves got pretty bored. And I think it was the bagger, no, it was the slicer, um, decided to um, uh, go off the network and go on a, a journey around the world. And it did so, and eventually um, ended up developing a deep relationship with a 100% rare IP address in Ukraine. Now, that's really not what um, a slicer should do, right? It's supposed to be slicing cookies on the machine. But that's what it did, because it got bored. The bagger, on the other hand, decided to stay at home and managed to wander across. There was no fire gap, uh, air gap. OT networks are pretty much not air gap from uh, IT networks before. Got on the main IT network and started doing some lateral movement, trying to ship some uh, data off to that rare IP address that I mentioned, OK? Our AI very, very quickly realized that these IT devices had departed from their pattern of life, because their pattern of life is pretty much set. It was a quite an easy one. We discovered it in seconds. But if you don't have this kind of approach, you won't see this. Okay? You won't see what they're doing. You won't see those changes until something pretty ca catastrophic happens. Pick another one. Uh, oh, right, yeah. Um, compromised parking payment kiosk. Uh, again, this is another uh, Internet of Things, uh, really. This was a transportation center in the United States installed several high-tech payment kiosks in their parking lots to help pro process payments and alert the maintenance issues in real time, okay? Uh, that, that's quite often what these things uh, work that way. To ensure the security of the corporate network, the organization configured the devices to ensure that they never connected to the corporate IT network. Good, good. However, one of the payment kiosks began making connections to suspicious websites containing adult content. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, why would a pay parking meter want to look at porn sites. But that's what it started doing. Uh, for a duration of five hours, the kiosk continued to visit and connect to the rare external location. Beyond this anomalous activity uh, uh, that exhibited, the payment kiosk's presence on the corporate network was critical latent vulnerability, okay? It's not what it was designed to do, but that's what it was doing. Somebody got on there. Fortunately, our AI was able to identify and remediate the vulnerability before it could actually be exploited for far more sinister purpose. Um, uh, RA meets the challenge of securing IT devices by establishing the visibility of all the de devices across the entire business. With this kind of approach, you cannot hide from this. It's every single packet off the network. We will see absolutely everything. When we go into organizations in the first time, we usually say, how many devices do you think you have? And if you say 20,000, we automatically expect you'll have 20 to 25 percent more connected devices than you actually know about. Because you can't see it. You haven't got the visibility. Anyway, we find this out uh, in quick time. It was a vulnerability, there was no actual hack, but quite clearly, if you were a security team, I think you'd want to know if your parking meters were visiting porn sites, right? Potential reputational damage to the company down the line. Next one, this is a good one. This was in a Japanese company, compromised security camera. Uh, Japanese investment consultancy. We discovered that an internet-connected CCTV system had been infiltrated by unknown attackers. The perpetrators had used the device to gain a foothold on the network and can watch all of the camera's video recordings from there. Installed to monitor the entire office space from the CEO's office to the boardroom, the camera instead became a security risk in itself. Luckily, our AI fought back at machine speed, preventing a serious breach. Our AI quickly detected that something was amiss. Massive volumes of data were observed moving to and from the unencrypted CCTV server as the attacker gathered data in preparation to exfiltrate sensitive information. Common, common form of attack, get in, find out what they're looking for, gather it up, and get ready to, to ship it off the network. At the point when the attacker tried to ex, uh, exfiltrate the data, the system decided to surgically block data movement from the device to an external server, while still allowing the CCTV to operate in its intended capacity. So we stopped the change, but in four, we made the CCTV camera get back to just being a CCTV camera. Amusement park in North America. It's another IT device one. This was a locker. Locker, um, an AI connected, sorry, uh, an IoT connected locker. Um, this smart locker, smart and inverted commas, regularly established contact with the supplier's third party online platform because they want to, I don't know, want to make sure is it, is it full, is it broken, are the hinges needing oil, or whatever. Um, the threat actor on this occasion uh, identified the source of this automated process and hijacked it to compromise the locker. Once infiltrated, the locker started to move over a gigabyte of unencrypted data across the network to a rare external file, a uh, rare external site. Clearly not what lockers are meant to do, right? Massive departure from the pattern of life of a boring locker. 
The connections, which could have included identifying details or sensitive credentials, had the potential to be transmitted over the internet entirely unprotected, giving the attacker's ability to intercept the connections and use the information to breach the company's network defenses. Making the attack particularly sophisticated and difficult to detect, the locker was sending data out in a slow but consistent manner. Our AI-powered threat detection, we were able to spot that even subtle, tiny changes to that pattern of life um, to detect that something had changed, okay? Without that ability, this could have gone on for months or potentially years. We determined, our AI determined that an autonomous response was required, and within seconds, and I mean seconds, uh, our antigena took action by intelligently blocking all outgoing connections from the compromised locker. In doing so, it gave ample time for the security team to, guess what, catch up, deal with it, and get that smart locker off the network. I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to give you a live demo. And I'm going to do this one. Actually, quick show of hands. How many people have actually heard about the Dark Trace fish tank story? Oh, yeah, actually, Cadian, you, you don't count. <laughs> All right, great. Okay, so I don't even need to look at my notes for this one. So this was, um, this was a, a, a casino in the States. And in order to amuse all the people who were losing their cash at regular events, they put in a huge fish tank. Inside the fish tank was a sensor to check on, I don't know, heat of the water, salinity, pollution, uh, other fish getting fed, all that kind of thing. And that's pretty much what it was supposed to do. What our AI discovered, we did a, what we call a proof of value went in, was that in actual fact, this fish tank was in touch with a 100% rare IP address in Finland had accessed the high roller database and was shipping it off to Finland. Not really what a fish tank is supposed to do, but that is an example of very clever hacks. And the only way you're gonna find these things is to have an immune system type approach that literally understands everything about everything on your network and can see change. And I hope you'd agree with me, that was quite a change to the fish tank in the casino. Thank you.